Okay, um, tell us what you're doing out here, Micah. What's going on today? Today we are in the scenic Smoky Mountain National Park, which is located uh, in parts of Jackson County, Swain County, and uh, oh, I, I can't remember what was it, Macon possibly if it goes out, no, I don't, I don't think it goes as far south as Macon, but um, this is a really, really remote, beautiful landscape that borders uh, northwestern North Carolina and parts of Tennessee. And uh, we are actually here today to get a feel for the landscape to see if it's possible that something large like a human or even a, a Sasquatch could live here. What sort of signs are you looking for in the wild? Um, well, you know, we've, we've looked for a lot of things. We've talked about things like the twisted branches and stuff that, that people talk about Sasquatches leaving. I'm not looking for that. Uh, I'm actually looking, you know, more at the lay of the land. Right now, people have tried to use the argument that in western North Carolina it's too vastly populated for there to be a habitat for these creatures to live in. And I don't agree. I mean, look around. This place is pretty remote, pretty dense. You know, the, the rhododendron and the laurel grows a lot thicker here than it does in parts of western North Carolina like Asheville. Do you feel that there's a clan or family of Bigfoot or uh, Sasquatch in this area? No, it's possible, you know. Belief. Tell me about some of the sightings. Um, there have been all kinds of sightings. Actually, the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization has uh, done a great job over the years cataloging sightings, and there have been um, encounters with things uh, as well as, you know, footprints and uh, things like that found and vocalizations heard in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park here, as well as the Nantahala Wilderness and the Pisgah National Forest south of here. And uh, these sightings have occurred since the 1970s. Um, you know, I think that there's probably a lot more uh, information about this, and there have been more sightings than we are aware of, but I think it's also unlikely that people have documented and recorded these things accurately and with consistency. And so we, we really have very little to go off of as far as documentation. So what would you say your strategy for finding or tracking one of these creatures is? Well, this is an info-gathering trip right now. Eventually what would be ideal is to try and gather reports and try and see if you can find some sort of area that has consistency. There was a woman up in the, uh, the Cherokee Mountains here named Wanda Childers who for 15 years had said that this thing had come down through her backyard at night. And it seems that that, seemed, that, that could have been a path that it was taking down a mountain from a cave that was up there in the hills behind her house um, <coughs> down to a creek. And if it's possible that this thing had followed a regular path through there, then it's also likely that if you were to set up camp there for several months, and observe that terrain that you'd be more uh, likely to see a um, you know, whatever these things are like this you know now hiking today on a, on a marked trail it's a little unlikely that you're going to see something along the lines of a sasquatch you know you're not going to come running down out of the woods and come out to meet you but uh if you were to sit quietly and kind of keep your presence you know on the, on the down low um it, you know I, if they're here i'd say you'd have a better chance at seeing one under those circumstances so now right now we're actually looking for an observation point and the valley here below us is, uh, is very, once again, rugged, but you've got your creek bed down there, and you've got all kinds of wildlife, vegetation, those kinds of things. And, uh, you know, this might be a good vantage point. But then again, along this trail, we may find something even better at a higher altitude. What are some of the names that the locals have called these creatures? Um, you know, I interviewed a Native American a little while ago, and his name was William Lossie. And William Lossie said that, uh, that he had always called them Bigfoot. Bigfoot, and that was really just Bigfoot. I mean, he had a, a very backwoods kind of accent. But there was also a word for them uh, that, that had been used, I think, that uh, referred to them as Kickly Cuddly. And they are Cherokee Indian legends, both about little people, fairy folk, and also large hairy Indians that lived in the mountains. And, of course, they, they kind of maintained that they were Indians and that they called them the Big Ones because they were physically larger. Um, but I think it's interesting uh, because so many... Native American cultures throughout the Americas have talked about finding large, uh, you know, what they call hairy Indians that are larger than them and speak different languages than them and, and culturally are just very different. They live and they lead a different lifestyle, more of a nomadic gathering, you know, hunter-gathering type uh, lifestyle and existence. Um, but yeah, you know, Kikli Cudley may have been one of these large folk that they talked about. And also there's another word from around the Eagle Nest area, which is maybe 50 miles or so that way. And uh, Eagle Nest calls them Boojum. I've heard Boojum several times, and there's an area up around Lake Logan 
where there's a road called Bujum Way or Bujum Trail. And uh, the legend of the Bujum is once again a large half man, half creature, half beast that lived in the mountains there above Lake Lodi. Why do you think they haven't found the remains or bones of a Sasquatch? I couldn't tell you. I mean, for years and years, people would know, and I know that there are a lot of researchers and biologists that would like to jump in there and say, no, 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 we know the reason, you know, they either don't exist, or B, the people who advocate the Sasquatch belief say that, well, what, what's really going on is that these things, uh, you know, they bury their dead, or, you know, you never see bear, you know, carcasses and things like that in the woods, and therefore you're not going to find, you know, bobcats, you're not going to find Sasquatches. But I'll tell you one thing, we found a dead hawk right down the, the trail here. Um, I thought that that was kind of odd, and... Uh, unless they do have some sort of cultural significance that they hold to burying their dead like we do, uh, I think it's it's only a, a matter of time that if they do exist that we will find a Sasquatch body. Um, because if these things, and granted, if they're seen walking in the woods by themselves, you know, then certainly they must die in the woods by themselves unless they, I don't know, unless they do keep some sort of semblance of cultural uh, or societal significance where they, where they band together or they travel in groups. But uh, most reports uh, that are documented have these things traveling alone. And um, if they travel alone the majority of their life, or if they're a nomadic and they, and they keep to themselves throughout their lives, then inevitably they're going to die alone in the wilderness. And uh, at that point, it's just a matter of finding where one died and then finding the, uh, the remains. And Micah, so uh, what is your strategy for today and this evening? Well today, right now, we're going to hike just a little further up this trail. We're on the Kanadi Fort Trail in the Great Smoky Mountain Wilderness Preserve. We're going to hike on up around probably the mountain here and kind of get a feel for the land and the landscape. And uh, if we can find an area where we can see down into a valley or a ravine very clearly, we're going to use night vision photography this evening. We'll probably start at about dusk and stay until a little after dark and just wait and see what happens. We're going to have audio recordings that we're going to be making and uh, we're also going to be uh, probably trying to take still photos and whatnot. We've got thousand candle flashlights and, and uh, other uh, equipment and tools that we're going to try and use so that if visibility is a problem but we want to come out here at night, hopefully we can kind of use technology to our advantage and see if indeed there is something uh, that's ranging through this this wilderness area. What is your role in today's investigation, Caleb? Basically, I'm just here to help carry around some equipment and further my knowledge for uh, for the, the Sasquatch, because I'm quite interested in the whole thing. Uh, and what are some things that you're going to be looking for along the trails we hike it uh, as possible signs of uh, you know these creatures? Definitely taking into consideration any kind of muddy spot or anywhere where the ground is soft because footprints are the the national known calling card of these animals and uh, we actually found some yesterday when we were doing a little bit of hiking which actually resembled a Bigfoot footprint, but what it was was a human footprint that was kind of older and then a deer footprint right on top of where the toe would be on the human footprint, so it kind of looked like it had toes, but it was pretty easily ruled out. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be looking out for stuff like that. Cool. Right. Are you ready to do this thing? Let's do it. Sweet. I hear perfectly. Drums. I heard wood on wood crack about 30 seconds ago up this way. Okay. But it sounded quite a ways off, like maybe maybe a hundred yards. Mm -hmm. Now the drum beat over this way, Mike. Which way? That? Now listen over here, you can hear it better. Can you hear it right now? Yeah, it's constant. It's I hear it now. I've definitely heard it. Yeah, that's I've been cool. here for like five, ten minutes now. Dude, and I heard that wood crack up there, but then again, it could have been uh, maybe a branch falling down or... Thing shh, shh, guys, shh, shh, shh. Oh. It appears to be getting more and more aggressive. 
The drum beating. Yeah. Yeah, this is a uh, it's a very interesting atmosphere here tonight. There seems to be a lot of potential energy here in the mountains. We've had all kinds of interesting equipment malfunctions, including our DAT recorder becoming distorted and then just quitting inexplicably. I was able to turn it back on and use it. And around that same time, we recorded what may have been a vocalization that we had initially heard down in this valley below us. We initially had heard something down here, and then it echoed. Not an actual sound echo, but, but another entity made a sound up here that echoed the first up on the ridge above us. We recorded Very that. Nice. It's a little chilly tonight. It's about 11 o'clock p.m. As we're, as we're here filming in the Great Smoky Mountains National Forest. Do you feel that maybe the sounds could have been an owl? Oh yeah, definitely. It could have been an owl, but what was interesting, it almost seemed like as if there was a an answering. Yeah, now, owl, to my knowledge, will do that. They will call and they will answer to one another, but the, the fact of the matter is here that every time I've listened to an owl, it's consistent. They'll go all night. We heard one two and then this reply on the mountain and then it all stopped and we haven't made any kind of significant noise that would have kept an owl from uh we heard something earlier it kind of sounded like drum beats yeah we want to describe any of that we've been hearing a constant pounding that could be the way that water is falling off of rocks um, and that's just down in this ravine below us here and it sounded like a constant thump 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 and actually thump. if you listen now you can hear it You can hear it very vaguely right there. What we're hearing, it's almost as though the uh, the pounding of the ancients is uh, audible to us tonight here in this ravine. Way the hell out here in the woods. You know what I noticed? What? There's a downward draft of dust that I can see in the light, which means there might be something up there staring at the ground. Hmm. What was that? Yeah, let's go ahead and say that again. I was just saying, I noticed well, as we were standing here, I started seeing this kind of downward drift of dust that I hadn't seen before, and it might mean that there might be something up the way from us a little bit, stirring up the d dirt. That's oh, really? disturbing. Caleb's heard something, sounds like something slowly moving around the ridge above us here yeah, all it night. It sounded like it was coming up over here just really slowly and quietly. Almost like Indian sneaking. Hmm. Yeah.